An army of giants emerges from the bush. Their advance raises clouds of dust that dry their mouths, but they must keep going. Some of the buffalo seem to take their time, but the herd pushes on. Their mission to reach the floodplain of the majestic Chobe River. Feeding, socializing, even mating, everything must be done on the move. Thousands of years ago, all this region in northern Botswana was submerged under the waters of an inland sea. But now, this is a land of thirst, where life gravitates around a few vital water sources. Here, all animals must abide by the rules of life in Africa after the flood. The Okavango Delta is dot with woodlands. Wherever the ground is high enough, often thanks to the termites building their mounds, spectacular trees grow and provide shade and shelter for all kinds of creatures. It is in these woods that we met Machaba, the female leopard. She allowed us to observe her family life with such abandon that at times we were reminded of our own pet cats. But when it comes to hunting, she is far more discreet. Last time, we left as she was turning her attention to some distant impalas. With her cub resting in the relative safety of a high branch, she moves on and disappears into the bush, as if using a magical invisibility coat. In a neighboring territory, another female leopard demonstrates the subtle art of stalking. She stands so still that only the leaves stirred by the wind show us that time hasn't stopped. Then a few meters more. The impalas don't look scared, but not quite relaxed either, so she ponders the situation. Not only her body language, but her eyes reveal her conflicting thoughts. Should she keep approaching? Indeed, she crosses another patch of open ground hides in the long grass. But then we find that she has turned 90 degrees and is actually coming towards us and away from the impalas. Has she given up? Actually not. She has decided to approach them from a different direction, taking advantage of a clump of trees that should allow her to spring right upon them. 
While the impalas are watched by a pair of young saddle-billed storks, the leopard inches her way to the herd. She is so close now, but in her mind the time is not yet. Some of them cross the channel in front of the storks, but most remain in a hesitant mass. As the morning sun gets ever warmer, she is dangerously close to overheating. Then, with the impala within a lip's reach, she decides to abort. As carefully as she approaches, she turns around, her presence still suspected, but not quite detected. She retreats to the shade of some nearby trees, where she will take time to consider her next move. Tension has diluted, and likely she will go hungry today. For us, witnessing her flexibility and control has been a glimpse into the deep nature of a leopard. Perhaps the most efficient predator of the delta is the wild dog. As the dogs move across the savanna, other animals react in different ways. This giraffe doesn't look worried, but it intends to keep them in sight. As the dogs advance, they come across some wildebeest, which manage to keep their alarm under control. But the impalas don't make any attempt to hide their fear. Better safe than sorry. But this particular pack is not so interested in hunting now, as in drinking. With the pups in tow, they gather at the waterhole. One of the pups stands out because of its almost uniform golden color, but otherwise it is just as playful as its litter mates. Off! to a new playground. Constant play and exercise will one day make these pups into fast, powerful hunters, just like their parents. Everyone wants to play with the younger pups, but the older ones seem to have just too much energy. Chasing vultures could be an entertaining exercise. The vultures don't go very far. When the exhausted puppies fall asleep, the birds can come back for scraps of the pack's latest meal. Or can they? At a safe distance from the dogs, young impalas also burn their surplus energy. males engage in mock fighting. Meanwhile, the wild dogs comb the bush for any random hunting opportunity.
camouflage many animals, which finally managed to escape. But the dogs persist all through the day. Eventually, there will be an impala that fails to run fast enough. Such is the essence of the wild dog. Cute, smart, athletic, and a ruthless killer. You just can't have the one without the other. At dawn, a hyena follows its nose for the location of any recent kills. The presence of this young predator doesn't cause much concern to the zebras grazing nearby. Under the morning sun, the tragedies of the previous day seem to dim behind a golden haze of hope. Wild creatures have the secret for learning from past dangers while living fully in the present. Predators are simply part of the zebra's reality, and they cannot spend their lives in terror. margins of the channels remain, as always, the meeting point for all sorts of animals. But they are also the place where life and death merge in a perpetual embrace. Small hunters take their diminutive prey. But these shores can be dangerous for almost any creature. In the afternoon, Machaba the leopard has caught an impala and has hidden the carcass in a thick bush. She is busy feeding, while the cub, who already looks satisfied, relaxes nearby. Machaba is not completely at ease and looks up at the tree as if considering the possibilities of holding her kill. She drags it closer to the trunk and her dilated pupils 
betray her attention. Then she decides to climb without the carcass. Maybe her own full stomach is enough of an extra weight to carry up the tree trunk. She lies down and rests as the afternoon gives way to the evening. comes a surprise. Wild dogs emerge out of the darkness. They rarely scavenge, but now they quickly locate the kill and claim it for themselves. With amazing efficiency, they pull the carcass apart. mother can do nothing but watch from her branch. But then we realize we have lost sight of the leopard cub. If the dogs catch her, there will be no chance of escape. Then, with great relief, we find her safely perched on the branch of another tree. Racing near the channels gets depleted, buffalo herds travel ever farther inland in search of pastures. Away from the delta, they enter a huge extension of shrub and woodlands, where wildlife is sparse. Mile after mile of dry land remind us of a time when there was no Okavango Delta to alleviate its monotony. But the prehistoric plains of northern Botswana were crossed by several rivers flowing from the north. Now, the shape of the land and the courses of the rivers have changed, but one big water course, the Chobi, can give us an idea of what life would be like around the ancient Kalahari rivers. Thousands of years ago, a series of fault lines caused large sections of the land to collapse, blocking the course of the rivers. One set created the Okavango Delta, the other deviated the Kwando, originating what we know as the Chobi. Today, the fault line is marked by an escarpment flanking the southern margin of the Chobi Valley. Water birds, like these cormorants and darters, find a haven in the Chobi. There is no shortage of fish prey for them here, and in fact, sometimes the problem is how to swallow an especially big catch. and down it goes for some more fishing. During the dry season, the African skimmers fly around the newly emerged sandy islands where they will nest. Every inch of real estate here is priceless 
and will be vocally defended. Little and white-fronted bee-eaters make their nests in the banks. They catch agile insects like this dragonfly. Colonies of pied kingfishers also take advantage of the banks for digging their deep nests, as does the diminutive malachite kingfisher, a tiny bird weighing only 15 grams. The giant kingfisher is 25 times more massive than the malachite, and without question, the most formidable kingfisher in Africa. It also nests along the river banks, and just like the others, it has reasons to worry when the water monitor is around. This huge lizard will readily eat any accessible eggs and chicks. It may even loot the nests of the Nile crocodile. The crocs themselves bask in the sun with utter abandonment, not even worried about the possibility of being walked over by elephants. When they wake up and enter the water, they become an invisible danger, which may emerge at any point to surprise and worry land animals, like these warthogs. Warthogs not only come to drink, they also enjoy munching on the soft vegetation at the water margin. Some animals take additional risks and cross to the river islands to graze on the rich grasses there. The carnivores also approach the river, both to drink and to take advantage of any hunting or scavenging opportunities. These chubby wild dogs move intently on one direction, while a spot hyena hurries on the opposite. The dog's blood-stained faces and full bellies show they have eaten their fill from a recent kill. The hyena takes care of the leftovers. As the dogs cross the chubby floodplain on their way back to the den, they are chased by zebra stallions, intent on keeping them away from the vulnerable foals. An adult zebra is a formidable beast, more than 300 kilos of hard muscle, shaped by evolution for tireless running, but well able to break a predator's jaw with a well-aimed kick. The wild dogs meekly allow the zebras to escort them away from the floodplain and into the bush, where the pups will be waiting. Guinea fowl are up early in the Chobi, 
picking seeds from the dusty ground. On the floodplain, hundreds of carmine bee eaters fly over their nesting colonies. But they need a proper perch to better launch their hunting flights. Some perches are especially popular. Bee eaters are among the most agile flyers, but the pale chanting goshawk may be able to catch a bee eater on the wing. Fish eagles perch near the river, always ready to honor their name, but sometimes they fly in pursuit of more unusual prey. It is chasing a yellow bill stork. This one flies away. The woodlands flanking the valley are crossed every day by hundreds of animals that seek access to the river. The sable is perhaps the most majestic antelope in Africa. But it is quite shy and feels exposed in the open ground near the river. To the sable, this place feels just too busy for comfort. Any sound may send it galloping up the escarpment. Back in the dry woodlands, Sable feels safe enough to indulge in a communal midday siesta. A close relative of the sable, the roan antelope is even larger and just as reluctant to get caught in the open. And then, of course, the impalas spend a lot of time in the floodplain. The Chobi floodplain is maintained by the yearly floods that prevent trees from growing and provide a fertile soil for annual grasses. Grazers come from far away to reap these pastures. And among them, the elephants, who regularly visit the Chobi Islands. In the afternoon, they swim back to the mainland. Sunset 
finds the giraffe, zebras and impalas wandering on the exposed plain. With the dark, they will need to be extremely careful with the predators prowling these shores. But the nearby woods are not free of perils either. A lioness watches the plains from her vantage point, while a leopard lets the last light of day pass before starting its night activity. As they move discreetly through the woods, leopards, like this mother and calf, are always cautious. In a place with so many competitors, they quickly stash their kills. But trees are not always safe. At the foot of an acacia, where she holds her prey, this leopard calls for her calf, but nobody comes. she decides to investigate. The mischievous cub just wants to play hide and seek. But as they get closer to the tree, the mother gets ever more nervous. She senses a threat. She hisses and snarls, but the cub just takes it as an invitation for more play. Then the mother sneaks away. No creature can do this like a leopard. Still, thinking of Machaba and the wild dogs, we wonder, wouldn't they be safer up in the branches? The answer is simple. This time, the threat is in the form of a baboon troop, and baboons would easily corner the leopards in the tree. She knows better than getting trapped in such a situation. Being in front of a baboon troupe is like watching a play with a full array of characters. They show the whole range of moods, from contemplative to playful to downright quarrelsome. As a baboon, you learn to beware your friend's quick temper. Yet, the glue that keeps baboon society together is the deep affection all troop members show for the little ones. Baboons find much of their food, like this mangosteen fruit, in the woodlands. but they can also exploit the water vegetation at the river margins. Baboon family life is always entertaining and often endearing to watch. But the large males are extremely powerful and quite defensive of the troop so that any sensible feline will always be cautious in their presence.
and like the leopard cub we have seen, these young lions will not grow up alone with their mother. They have cousins of different ages to play with, and several aunts to protect them and to learn from. It is striking that lions and leopards, being so closely related, have so different social lives. But it is those differences in behavior that allow them to share the land, here in the Chobe Valley. Because of their situation, these woods bring together animals from contrasting environments. But there is one particular animal that you would hardly expect to encounter here. It is a veritable ghost that is rarely seen anywhere. The brown hyena. This shy carnivore is normally found in dry areas, and it crosses this fringe land during its wide foraging trips. As it walks along, it passes in front of a flock of guinea fowl, whose carefree mood suggests there is no danger nearby. But this place also serves as the denning area for the local lion pride. Now they are just enjoying their family life. But as they stretch and get ready for action, they could easily make short work of a careless brown hyena. With enormously powerful jaws, the hyena has a stronger bite than a lion, but it wouldn't stand a chance in a confrontation. It doesn't seem to have a care in the world, but its prodigiously keen senses would alert it of any disturbance. Moving in total silence, it is soon swallowed by the darkening woods. With the growing darkness, guinea fowl no longer feel safe in the ground, so they seek their night roosts, like this baobab tree. The morning finds the buffalo crossing the wood-covered escarpment. Their never-ending pilgrimage is signaled by clouds of dust and the low thunder of hooves. As they walk along, they cross a diversity of environments, thriving with animal life. Within sight of the river, dragonflies and butterflies fly around even in the middle of the winter, attracting the attention of insectivore birds like the swallowtail bee-eater, the lilac-breasted roller, or the robin chat. Blue-eared starlings are one of many bird species that seek bugs among the dung of large herbivores. Those bugs also catch the attention of the mongooses.
but getting too focused on feeling may come at a cost. The martial eagle doesn't forgive a moment's distraction, and the hunter becomes the hunted. As the temperatures rise, elephants seek shades to those of the hottest hours. Access to shrinking shades is contested and may lead to fights, as with these kudu bulls. Eventually, animals make up their minds to share the shades, even with other species, and lay down to rest. There isn't really much else to do at this time of day. Even at the river, when the sun beats down, most big animals prefer to save their energies. But as the air gets cooler, traffic around the river resumes. The chobi creates an explosion of life in an area that would otherwise be almost barren. Animals come looking for plenty, but many pay the ultimate price. Seasonal changes create a pulse that dictates the movements of animals to and from the river. But when those established rhythms change, the stakes get higher for everyone around Botswana's precious water sources. <laughs>